Hello all my Kinvians and welcome to a new episode of Discovering Classic Doctor Who. Today I'm going to be watching Kidnap, which is honestly kind of a almost overly simple name for an episode on the show, and A Desperate Venture, which um, I'm going to guess the Desperate Venture is them getting off the Sense Sphere. Sense Sphere? Sensor Sphere? Sense Sphere, that's it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, last we saw the Doctor heard a monster, possibly. Might be a monster, might be a trick. Not entirely sure yet, but I'm just ready to get into it. So let's get going with no further ado in three, two, one, go. We are helpless anyway. Our warriors will be more of a hindrance than a help. Yes, yes. Some warriors. <laughs> I am not scared of the dark. Mm. You have made the senior warrior shall know me by the sash I wear. Your sash. Guard him well. Why have you listened to me? I Are think we need a different form of identification. People, no surrender. Up. <laughs> Oh, he's dead. I guess. He has broken it. Really? You sure it was from his coat pocket? I tell you, yes. All the sense rights know the doctor by his. <laughs> the doctor's coat is outside the aqueduct. You are lying. Then, then it, it was a cloak he was wearing. Some things, but mostly there seems a sort of grey cloud. I'll observe this precious. that if they did not kill my advisor, then he must have been killed by a sensorite. Duh! Do such a thing. Who yet? Oh, is she gonna die? Well, there was a kidnapping there at the end, so at least the... <laughs> The title wasn't <laughs> completely inaccurate. <laughs> I don't know, I was starting to assume that maybe the kidnap was uh, intended to refer to the second elder that got killed. I don't know, but uh, again, at least they <laughs> followed up on it there at the very end. Probably could have gone with a better name for the episode, but what are you going to do? But, uh... Yeah, I, you know, to be honest, I didn't really write down all that much for this episode. It's, um, not that it wasn't eventful, it's like there were certain, there were particular things that did happen clearly. There was, um, the, it's so weird calling them by their titles, but, um, the city administrator, uh, basically getting the second elder killed. Um, which really is the biggest event. Uh, him getting the second elder killed and then becoming the second elder himself. And dear God, I know I mentioned before that the, like, the Sensorites, or at the very least this one, has no sense of subtlety. <laughs> but it's just like, Immediately, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as he has the sash officially, is like he's not even pretending to be nice. He's not even giving a veil that he's not opposed to them. It's just he's being blatantly a jerk. And I don't know. I. I know that it's all part of the plot, and this is for a family audience, which includes younger kids. And, you know, some of the younger kids, they might... Uh, well, no, they know what's going on, so I don't exactly know what the deal is. It, it seemed like everyone was just a little bit too slow to pick up on the idea that it might have been the city administrator. It didn't take too long... Thankfully, <laughs> but still, it was just, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Was, but And then, after they started to pick up on it, they didn't mention it at all. Or it didn't seem like they had a plan to sort of keep him from further interfering. It's like, I understand why they wouldn't necessarily bring it up to the first elder, because questioning the second or the new second elder could be seen like it might uh, break some of the trust that they've built. But at the same time, if it's been proven that the uh, you know that they didn't kill the second elder, then bringing it up about the city administrator, former city administrator, God, it's so confusing. I mean, bringing that up could lead to, I don't know, the first elder taking some action instead of just being concerned. So yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, there was, de again, definitely some significant occurrences within this episode, but it, if nothing else, it felt mostly like set up for this final episode of the serial, which is a desperate venture. And again, it's like, I assume that they're going to run into the monsters. They'll find out that their paralyzers don't work. And yeah, it just seems like if something's going to happen and there's a lot of some things that could happen, it's going to be in this episode. So... Let's go ahead and get into it and find out what's going to happen and get right into a desperate venture. In three, two, one, go! You see, if, if the previous episode had started with the kidnapping, that would have made more sense. I don't know. Your life means nothing to me. Get this back to pocket. You will write the note. I will see you live. Just yell! It paralyzes them. We cannot, we cannot. Are you implying that your friend Carol is being held prisoner in this panic? Yeah. I assure you she is not. Slide down. Slide down! Exactly. Take him to the first ender. That's all you gotta do. Listen to you once. This time you will not escape. Not sure how effective that'll be. <laughs> you trust him physically? I trust all sensor rights. You will regard it safely. Thank you. Please find them, Barbara. I trust all sensor rights, except for the one who they're going to have killed and the accomplice. Yet with strong determination and having evidence, circumstantial and otherwise, calculating it, pursuing it until it's in a death. Hello. End. It's fascinating. Doctor. Oh, don't interrupt your boy, it's most irritating. Hello. I am. I've been trying to help you, dear sir. Yes, the commander. You'll have to talk to him. Follow me. So you're really number two, not number one. Curious why they're trying to kill the Censorites. What fighting? Look forward to a bit of a rest now for a while. Yes, you deserve it, sir. Free to take the others back to Earth. They were completely insane. Yeah. They really believed they were at war with you. At some time, they must have opened their minds. Well, at least they know where they're going. Implying I don't? <laughs> so you don't think I'm an incompetent old fool, do you? Now, Doctor, I never Since think Since you are so dissatisfied, my boy, you can get off the ship. And the very next place we stop, I shall take you off myself, and that is quite final. Carry on. Uh... That was weird. Like, just... All of a sudden, the doctor gets super hostile against Ian uh, off of a joking side comment. I don't know, that's 
That was really weird and totally unexpected. So, yeah, I mean, we... I'm, I'm honestly a bit disappointed in this final episode. Like, there were events that are mentioned that took place that I wish they had shown is like, okay, they took away the crazy people who were poisoning the water. I mean, that's, that's good. But we don't see the bad sensorite getting his comeuppance. We don't see him getting uh, singled out or getting the blame. It's just like, oh yes, well, he will be sent out to wherever. And then the others, it's just like, they. there's not even really a goodbye. It's just, oh yeah, they're, uh, uh, oh, we said goodbye to John and Carol. We don't actually see it. It's just, once they get out of the aqueduct, it's some um, Susan talking to the first elder, and then everyone's on the TARDIS. And then when they're on the TARDIS, it, again, just that last part there, like, I was expecting the doctor to start laughing, just being like, oh, I'm just kidding. It's like, you know, just a good bit of wit, having a little joke. But, I don't know, unless they start the next episode with him laughing then, it just seems completely out of place. And just like after all the rapport that they've been building up, it's like, you know, there's trust there, there's friendship there between them all. And then just all of a sudden, because Ian comments on, like, you know, well, at least they know where they're going, which is clearly said jokingly, the doctor's all of a sudden super pissed off and says he's going to kick them off of the TARDIS. Yeah, I don't know. Again, again, I hope that it's just something that's leading up to a joke in the next episode, but... If it's not, and it very well may not be, it, it just seems completely out of place. And yeah, I, I don't understand why the Doctor reacted that way. I don't know, it's just very, very strange. And there were a few things that I mentioned during the actual uh, uh, reaction portion of this video, but I don't know, maybe Carol didn't hear anything about how it's like, you know, loud noises hurt them. But, I don't know, I feel like in all the time that all of them have been interacting and talking with the doctor and all that, that someone would have mentioned that it's loud noises that hurt them, not just, you know, being confused when they're in the dark. So, and all John did, really, in order to distract or hurt the one that was standing guard over Carol, was he yelled really loud. And that's all Carol had to do. I just... Uh, I don't know. That, that really bothered me. <laughs> that... I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, even if it had been a thing where it's like, you know, Carol struggled a little bit, or she just very loudly said, no, I will not write this, it's like, they would have flinched, and that would have given an indication of what was going on. Uh, but, but moving on from there, one thing that I really did like here was Susan talking about Gallifrey, and it's very, very similar if not the same words that the doctor uses, I th well, I, th I think in various iterations when talking to the different companions in the new series, uh, talking about uh, like the the burned or the the burned orange skies and the silver treetops, it it's I, I love that picture, and it was really cool to see Susan talking about that, and. Yeah, I really, 
I really do feel like um, in the coming episodes, we're going to see more progression with Susan as far as her growing up, as far as her continuing to become more independent from the Doctor and eventually leave at some point, whether it's uh, going back to Gallifrey or something else. I'm not sure, but I'm uh, very much interested to find out what the deal is there. And then finally, I, I wrote this down before it was revealed, well, the first elder said that it was likely that they had been driven insane because they opened their minds and were probably experimenting with their devices so that uh, affected their minds to make them think that they were at war. And that explained, I mean, my whole issue was like, you know, they're, they're not at war, what is wrong with you all? But it makes sense afterward once I know the full context of what was going on. Other than that, I was just going to say the humans are so dumb. So dumb. But again, they were driven insane by the mind control stuff. So yeah, it's, it's understandable to that degree. But that being said, uh, first of all, the sound going on, the, the, the monster sound, is like, clearly it was being utilized by the commander and his number one and number two. Uh, I'm curious how they were producing that particular sound. And also, in the previous episode when the doctor was attacked, is like when when Susan and Ian found him it's like he was on the ground and his coat was torn but there were no other marks like he didn't have any other marks on uh, the rest of his clothing is like and he wasn't hurt other than you know collapsing so was that those soldiers and if so why I mean, maybe they thought that, or, or they couldn't see well without the light, so they thought maybe it was a sensorite? I don't know, but even if that was the case, if they think they're at war, and they actually attack, uh, they actually attack the person who happens to be the doctor, why would they only tear his coat? I don't, I don't know, there's... I like the concept of this serial. I think it had a lot of possibilities, but it really fell short in the execution, especially in these last few episodes, which I thought were going to be, I mean, not necessarily grand and like big in scope, but just more going on and things not being quite so <sighs> poorly written, maybe? Now maybe that's the right way to put it. It's just, yeah, the the final few bits here, especially in that last episode, were just so unfulfilling, incredibly anticlimactic, or e not even necessarily anticlimactic, but it just it petered out, I guess you could say. And and one thing that stood out to me, and it was funny the first few times. Um, is when uh, the person playing the first elder would stumble over his lines. Maybe, you know, it's understandable. Uh, they only get to film this, uh, or film these, like, what's the max? Like, maybe three shots uh, before they just have to move on. But I find it really strange and a bit annoying that it happened so frequently for the guy playing the first elder. Um, like, yeah, it's like William Hartnell, he has issues sometimes, and it's like, and he'll stumble over his words, but it's just kind of uh, masked in him, like, you know, t maybe talking a little bit too fast or just sort of stumbling over his words, whereas the first elder here, they were clearly just mistakes because he wouldn't even keep talking, he would just pause for a second and then say what he was supposed to say. I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh, but... There were, there were a lot of 
like speaking line mistakes in these last few episodes that really stood out for me. So yeah, um, again, I, I like the concept of this serial. I think it had a lot of really good possibilities. And again, the fact that the Censorites inspired the Ood is really cool. But the, the execution leaves a lot to be desired, unfortunately. I, I really wish the execution had been more solid. But that being said, I'm ready to move on from here and begin the Reign of Terror, which I can only assume is going to be when, uh, you know, the Doctor kicks Ian off the TARDIS, unless it happens that he is just joking around. But again, I am really looking forward to getting into this six-episode serial. I think only two episodes of which... Uh, oh, no, no, wait. There's four episodes of this that are uh, still maintained, whereas two of the episodes are going to be reconstructions of sorts, shall we say. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see. But everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I do apologize for anyone that really enjoys this serial and my words might have let you down, but it, 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 again, I feel like the episode sort of just didn't work for me, but again, as a whole, I really enjoyed the concept, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you all have to say in the comments down below about these episodes, or about the serial itself, if you want to talk more broadly, and also I'd like to hear what, uh, your thoughts on what I've had to say, uh, because I feel like I didn't have a whole lot to say about these two episodes so yeah maybe you feel like I'm shortchanging it let me know but until next time for the reign of terror I'm Papa Ken and I'll see you in the next episode of discovering classic Doctor Who well now I'm stumbling over my words anyway Alonzi!